What's up everybody, this is Whiskey in the Six, I'm Rob, doing a bourbon review today. I got the 15 year old Calame to my left over here. This is 52.5%, 105 proof. And the 16 year old, which came out in 2022, so it's a little bit newer than the 15 year old that's been coming out for a few years now. Uh, and it's 53% on the dot, so 106 proof. Gonna nose both of these, taste them, give them a mark. So uh, right off the hop, I wanna say that these are pretty reasonably priced based on what bourbon is going for at this age, all right? Uh, the only ones I can compare them to are some of the BTAC bottles. Um, you also have Knob Creek 15 has come out recently and it's not that cheap here. I'm not sure what it goes for in the States, but I know that you can get the 15 for just under $100 in most places, unless that's gone up recently. And then this one over here cost me uh, close to 200 bucks Canadian. The 15 year is on loan from my good friend P-Boss, so thank you very much to him. Interested to do this head to head because I remember really liking the 15 year old when I first tried it. Uh, the 16 year old has opened up a lot since I first opened it. The last time I tried it, it was excellent. So here we go. All right, so 15 year old, lots of brown sugar notes right off the hop. Charred brown sugar. Dark, almost burnt brown sugar into like liquid form. So when I was younger, um, I have this strong memory of when my grandmother attempted to make uh, toffee for me. She didn't know how to do it. Italian grandmother, uh, right off the boat, uh, and she did her best to make it. And I remember there, she charred the sugar a little bit too much when she made the toffee. Um, so that was her first run at it. Her next run and many after that were incredible, but uh, the first one reminds me of this a little bit because it's got that like charred sugar kind of note on the palate. Okay, so continues to be sweet on the palate as well. Maybe like a touch of like a grassy note. Um, definitely rich in like caramels and brown sugars. Less, on, less char on the palate. Not very oaky either, which is kind of cool for a 15 year old bourbon that's not typical, I wouldn't think. Some nice vanilla notes on the nose here as well. Definitely rich caramel, brown sugar, toffee, those kind of notes for sure. Really sweet, really, really nice. Yeah, I'm gonna give this one an 87, or you know what, maybe even an 88. It's really good. Um, as far as bourbon goes, obviously you guys know I don't review a ton of bourbon, but that is definitely in my wheelhouse. I like bourbon with a little bit of age to it. It stands out from the stuff that we're used to, and this one is no exception to that. So like I said, that's about an 88 for me. Over here to the 16 year old. Okay, so there's almost something fruity in the background here. Still get those rich brown sugar notes, not as much char. Now the 15 year old has been open a lot longer than the 16 year old, so uh, it may have had a little bit more time to open up. It's a little bit more muted, the 16 year old, than the 15 year old on the nose. Both of these are unchill filtered. I'm assuming uh, they're probably close, close to cast strength barrel proof. Uh, maybe a little bit of water added, not much.
Okay, so despite the slight, the slightly higher ABV on the 16 year old, it drinks uh, softer. It doesn't drink as hot. Not that the 15 is hot by any means, but uh, obviously there's different barrels used for both of these and whatever they chose for the 16, it's not the same whiskey. It doesn't taste that similar. Um, there's some nice age to the 16 year old. I wonder if they added barrels that are even older than 16 to it. Not as sweet as a 15, but more refined. It is more expensive, closer to 200 Canadian, so about like 130, 140, uh, maybe upwards of 170, depending on where you are in the US. Yeah, I think I actually am leaning towards the 15 a little bit more. Yeah, so again, the 16 is a little bit more refined. It's hard to sip the 15 first and then go to the 16 because of the sweetness difference. The 15 is a touch more sweet. Um, so when you go to the 16, you're looking for that sweetness and it's not there as much. Um, but if you were to start with the 16, I think I would have enjoyed it more if I started with the 16 than the 15. They're both in their own right very good uh, for different reasons. I'm gonna give this 16 one more sip and then give it a mark. Yeah, it's so close. It's so close. <clears throat> the, I would say that the 16 is, there's more going on on the palate. Uh, there's like subtle notes of like dessert, like creme brulee and um, brown sugar, similar to the creme brulee taste, some nice vanillas, some nice caramels and toffees and the stuff that's typical of bourbon, but more refined, uh, that extra age uh, definitely helped. <clears throat> but that being said, and what I really like about the 16 is there's this nice, tea note finish uh, that on the finish you get like a black tea kind of note or, or at least a note that you would get after sipping black tea and then tasting it after the fact. Um, so that's really cool about the 16. Probably very close in mark. Uh, I'm gonna give the 16 a solid 87, whereas the 15 is probably an 87, 88. All right, so both very good. Uh, definitely would buy them again. Have one on my bar for that price. It's, it's nice to be able to get this kind of stuff uh, when BTAC is basically impossible to get. And I don't think that there's a huge difference in quality in my opinion. Um, but obviously some people might disagree with that. Either way, both very good, really happy with them. And that's it for me guys. Hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you really liked the video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. You can get the bell to get notifications for when I do release videos and you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and support this channel on Patreon if you like. Cheers.